Hello everybody on YouTube, Al's Geek Lab here with me, Al. Hello. Uh, today I'm going to do a Linuxy thing um, because, well, I just wanted to and I thought that I would do it in sort of real time so I've got no experience of what I'm about to install so it's kind of like one of those off the cuff things. I'd probably do this live streaming but, you know, I just, I just decided to do it like this today. So if I make a complete goof of it, then you've enjoyed the uh, the the trials and tribulations of someone who should know better, but actually doesn't. So today I'm going to be talking about this thing, which is called Zelage or Zilic or Z uh, I don't. I have absolutely no idea what it's called. Or well, I I know what it's called because it says it right there on my screen. However, I have no idea how to pronounce it. But anyway, there you go, Zelage. I'm going to call it Zelage. And my apologies goes out to the author of this. Um, if I've mispronounced that, please don't kill me, internet. I would, uh, I'd be very happy to live a few years longer. Now, what is Zellage? All right, so if you are a Unix savant, if you've been using Linux for decades or two, then you might know that it's quite cool to have more than one terminal open at the same time because you can do a lot of things and um, it's it's pretty good and, and it just generally looks like Unix porn as well. So yeah, having two terminals, three terminals, four terminals, five, seven, six, maybe all side by side in a sort of tiling fashion that's all kind of competitive in terms of that like, you can take information from that terminal and that terminal really easily all by binding to the keyboard and doing things is called terminal multiplexing. And you might be asking, well, why don't I just run multiple instances of my terminal emulator? Well, that's fine, but then you can't really get them to kind of work in the same way and they can't all be in one terminal itself. So it kind of misses some of the, the power. Now, in back in the old days, yes, I'm that old, I used to use Screen for this. Now, Screen was great, um, and also helped keep SSH connections alive. Um, SSH connections, if you've used any remote connection to a Unix server or Linux server over the years, you'll notice that when you SSH into them, they kind of go dead after a while because they just time out usually. And that's still the case. And so one of the ways that we could get around, of, around that was kind of using NoHup, but it wasn't very, very good. So the other way was to use screen and that kind of kept the connection alive and has worked flawlessly for me over the years. But at about, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that, I found the beauty of Tmux, which enabled us to do not just like flopping, flipping, flipping between sessions. It also allowed us to do um, split screens. We could split screens horizontally, vertically, make things really nice. And it allowed us to sort of move up and down buffers and allowed us to copy and paste text between these virtual windows. So it was a really great boon for me on, on Linux. And basically, I've used Tmux forever. This Zellage program is effectively the same thing, but with a modern twist. Okay, so let's have a look at what it says here on the GitHub. Uh, the GitHub, by the way, I'll post it in the description of the notes, but github.com forward slash zillage dash org dash uh, slash zillage. Okay, so it says is zillage is a workspace aimed at developers, ops oriented people and anyone who loves the terminal. That's me. Similar programs are sometimes called terminal multiplexers. Hey, so far, I'm I'm so right. This is wonderful. Zellage is designed around the philosophy that one must not sacrifice simplicity for power, taking pride in its great experience out of the box, as well as the advanced features it places at users' fingertips. Yes, yes, very good. So by now, if you're anything like me, you want to know how to install it. I'm on a Mac OS box, but I'm happy to let you know that I have a Linux box just to my side here, and I've already installed it, and I've been playing around with it momentarily. I haven't really done that in any great sense. I've literally downloaded the um, release binary and then just got it running. So I haven't really played with it. I've just got it installed. Now you can install it um, through a package, which is here, which is, uh, I think, uh, not, well, it's not what I did because there's only packages available for Arch, Fedora and Void, uh, as well as a MacOS, um, which you can get this way. Now, um, I installed the, um, the Tarball release, which is somewhere around here. 
let me just see if I can find that. Um, you can actually try it out. You can just try running this from Bash and it will download this uh, code from, from here, which you may go, well, that's a bit insecure and I'd be, I'd, I'd be right behind you on that. So don't necessarily run things you don't know what they do in your command line, but you could, if you wanted to, just run it as a sort of trial um, by issuing this one command and it will download it and then run it for you in your command line um, as a sort of trial before you buy it, which you don't have to because it's free. Um, but yeah, if you want to install it, you can download the package um, as, it sh as I just showed you there and also by um, downloading the latest release, which is here. Um, and yeah, so there's Darwin, which is obviously um, Mac OS. There's an Arch 64 and an x86-64 release. So I downloaded the this one here, the Tar GZ, which is because I'm on x86-64, which is the usual 64-bit Intel architecture, and downloaded the Tarball, un unzipped it, Tar, tar ZXVF, uh, this file name, and then it gave me the one binary Zillage. Um, which I copied into user local bin and then I could just type Zellage from wherever I was because it was in the path and life was good because then I could run Zellage. Okay, let's talk about actually getting it installed. So I'm going on to this um, uh, terminal here and I'm going to install it using brew because I'm on a Mac here. So brew Mac in, uh, to brew install and then the... Um, the package in brew, I think, is just Zillage. Looks good. Excellent. So that was nice and painless, wasn't it? So that should hopefully have installed it into the path as well, which it has. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I've uh, zoomed out a little bit. Hopefully you can still see this, but I wanted to give you the um, the fully zoomed out quick tips along the bottom here. So control plus G, P, T, N, uh, and so forth gives you the quick tips on what to do with the application. So for example, if I press control plus P for pane, it selects this pane and then there's new, uh, new options on the line below it. So for example, N, the up, down, left, right, the close, rename, full screen, floating, embed. And I already loved this because in Tmux, especially if you haven't used Tmux before, now my memory, my muscle memory is quite good now because I've been using Tmux for years. But the one big problem or the barrier to entry with Tmux is effectively that it's really hard to remember all the different key options. So having them down the bottom here is really handy if you've got um, you know enough real estate on your screen. So yes, okay, this is a bit more heavy on the screen. You've got this bit up the top that says tab one, and then you've got the pane, and then you've got these two lines here. But if you've got a modern widescreen monitor, you know having a three lines or four lines taken away from you is probably not that big a deal. So, and it certainly isn't for me. So I'm, I'm going to persevere with this. So yeah, so I've done control P and that's given me this new context line down at the bottom and I can press N and look at that. Et voila, now I have two uh, split panes and it uses um, the H, J, K, and L um, or up, down, left, right to navigate between those terminals. So I'm doing there is pressing Alt and left and alt and right to go between those panes. That's really neat, but I can also do H, um, J, K, and L. So alt, J, that's not working. <laughs> I think that's probably because of Apple. Uh, it was working on my um, my Linux box, so uh, you'll have to take my word for that. But basically, yeah, alt, N, um, so alt, P, uh, will open up a new pane for me if I press N and of course it's automatically sorting those panes out for you. So it's uh, ut utilizing the space um, better for you and whatever you can do. Now this one is new on me. I think that the, let's just do hello world here and let's just see if that makes any difference with control S and search and we could search for um, hello or hello with um, capitals. There we go. So now it's highlighted the text hello from hello world, which is 
flaming awesome. That amount, that amount of time it's going to save me to search for stuff is really cool. I, I really enjoy that. That's um, really awesome. So pressing escape to get out of the menu then again I can press control and O for session and give the session manager uh, which is really cool. Um, I can attach and resurrect, resurrect sessions like you could do in Tmux. So um, I guess when a, a terminal session dies um, you can resurrect it by doing tmux attach on the command line and that just brings you back to where you were. So if you had multiple panes up like this or even just one pane, then it would show you exactly where you left off even if your SSH connection had died because the tmux process is still alive. Well, it's the same thing there but a bit more, I guess, user friendly so you're able to just um, reattach to a session there which is really nice. Now let's have a look at P and um, go to floating. We can actually make a floating pane as well. Not that I think I will use that one, um, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. And I can press Control W um, there to hide that one as well. And of course you can um, resize as well. So I can um, just go um, Alt and I think it's something like that. I'll figure that one out. Um, as you can see, I'm, you know, making this up all, as I go along. So H move allows me to switch the panes between each side there. So pane three is on the right hand side. And if I press left arrow there, it appears on the left, which is really cool. Um, what else can we do? So if we do control tab, that allows us to what rename a tab. So hello, we'll call that one. And um, we can resize obviously with um, control N. So they're decreasing the size vertically. It does have a plugin system um, which is based on WebAssembly. So I'll um, just bring up the documentation page. I appreciate this is a bit small. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Ooh, uh. So yeah, so Web Zillage offers a WebAssembly WASI plugin system. And so you can write your own and I believe there's obviously um, plugins that you can uh, down, download and obtain. There's an API here and so forth. So there's quite a lot of documentation on this already, um, which is pretty cool. You can, of course, like every good um, terminal thing, you can download your themes and play about to the heart's content. Um, I always think that low color is better because you never know what terminal you're actually going to be on. So 16 color or even 256 color, I guess, is better for me. But, you know, some people um, believe that's not the case and like to have mega loads of color. But, you know, some, some people are weird like that. <laughs> I often end up with ANSI only colors or whatever. So that's my world. Um, so you can change the, the, the terminal modes as well. Like for example, you can go straight into normal old bindings from Tmux. And of course you can, you can choose which way you want to do that as well, which is nice. So here's a quick look at some example plugins that they have on the Zellage uh, user guide, which is zellage.dev. If you're interested down here at 6.6 .6 example plugins, here's one called Harpoon. But you can see in this one here, Harpoon, enables quick navigation to your favorite panes. Um, there is JBZ, which allows you to spawn all your just commands. There is a fuzzy finder for names and the contents, which is, yeah, I guess uh, pretty cool. So if you've got a file that you know exactly what it is that you want to use, then a fuzzy finder can be really, uh, really quite quick. And you can open your results in your editor, like Vim, for example. Multitask is, um, a plugin as a mini CI allows your specified commands that will run in parallel, keeping a track of completed commands. So I guess if you're a developer, uh, that one could be pretty helpful. Uh, room is for quickly searching and switching between tabs. Yeah, again, if you've got lots of tabs open, that can be pretty helpful. Uh, Zillage Forgot is a plugin to quickly help you access and search through customizable list of items. Can't remember your key bindings, Zillage forgot can help them, help you, which is pretty good. And uh, ZJ status, obviously, if you want a really customizable status bar, 
then the ZJ status plugin is for you. So you can see how um, extensible Zillage is, and obviously it looks like the uh, plugins are, um, there's more and more coming all the time. So there you go, there's um, the whole bunch of things which uh, Zillage is usable for. Um, I'm gonna definitely take it for a spin, and if I really like it, then I will replace Tmux with it. But it already looks like there's plenty of reasons to like it. I think the only thing that I guess is a compromise is the lack of screen real estate. There are some servers which I use Tmux on and you know, you've got that bar down at the bottom, the status bar for one of a better term. It tells you what shell you're on, what tells you what the time is and uh, what executable it is you're running. Now that's fine. But sometimes there are certain processes which that really confuses the life out of. So sometimes having all this extra stuff in the way confuses applications. So um, I have had to switch off that status bar in Tmux. So I dare say that might be the case also with Zellage. But other than that, um, other than that, Zellage looks like it's showing a lot of promise, and I will um, I'll uh, let you know how I go. But yeah, there you go. It's um, that Zellage. Get it from zellage.dev or on the GitHub page, which is github.com forward slash zillage dash org. Anyway, you have been watching Al's Geek Lab. I hope that this was informative, helpful, entertaining, or a mixture of all of those three. If uh, you like this video then why don't you check me out at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. Got lots of videos up there. All of my videos get released early on my Patreon. There's also some internal um, behind the scenes content that doesn't get put up anywhere else. Um, I also have on Substack pretty much a mirror image of what's on Patreon. So for example, if you just love Substack for no good reason, then head over to there, substack.com and, and search for Al's Geek Lab. I'm on Twitter, I'm, or X as it's called these days, just search for Al's Geek Lab. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram and a whole bunch of other things as well. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can see all the new videos that are coming out from me. Um, I promise I would say that none of them are spammy. I don't really spammy videos. It's just solid, good content. Um, this is a kind of more off the cuff one um, where I don't really practice too much of what I'm going to say. It just kind of comes out of me. And of course, um, a lot of them are more scripted. Uh, I do documentaries and stuff like that. Hit the notification bell, as I say, subscribe to the channel. And if you could leave a comment, press the thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and be excellent to each other. Bye for now.